Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Pat Something here again with another video and today I've got a bit of a different one. It's something that I haven't done in a long time. Today I'm doing a logo tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create this, which is a very simple, elegant and professional looking logo, sticking by all the new trends if you're someone who loves trends this year. If you're new to this channel, then press that red subscribe button down below for more content like this, tutorials, graphic design stuff, and also put that notification bell on so you never miss an update. And if you could share this video to any of your designer friends or people that you work with, that would be awesome too. So today we're going to be doing a logo design and it is for a tech company called Tech Flower. Now the brief that I have written up for myself and you guys can do this along with me if you want to, is that this company is a technology company, creates technology for the ecosystem. So basically they're eco-friendly and the whole premise of their technology is to better the earth. So I'm not going to show you the entire process of this but I'm going to show you my rendition of what I would do for this logo design and at the end of the video you should have already seen it but at the end of the video I'll show you the logo design and how I came to make it. Okay so first things first when you're creating a logo the most important aspect of the logo is to create something simple. So we're going to create because it's eco I'm going to think of leaves. I'm not going to oversimplify it. I want people to know that this is an eco company as soon as they look at it. So the way that I'm going to create a leaf is really simple and basically like this. I'm going to create two perfect circles here. I'm going to make sure the white stroke is away from the circle. The next thing I'm going to do after I've got my circle is I'm going to duplicate and hold shift and when I duplicate this I'm holding option and shift or alt and shift and you can see the shape in the middle here. This is what we want. So there's a couple ways of getting this shape in the middle. So you can press shift and M and you could take these away like so, or you could do an intersect. Now intersect is the pathfinder function of doing it. So intersect, where is it? There it is. So it's the third one in intersect. So there is a primary shape right there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate that up there to make sure we don't lose it. I'm just gonna scale it down a tiny bit as well. I just don't wanna lose that first shape. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got some guides in place. I'm gonna put one directly in the center of the artboard because I know I want to use symmetry to create this logo. So the first thing is I'll just bring that down. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the stroke is black so I know where it is. I'm going to align it to the artboard so it's perfectly in the center. I'm gonna highlight the stroke and press Command Five. Now the reason why we're doing this is so that we can mirror what we're doing on one side of the logo to the other. The brain loves symmetry. The humans are basically symmetrical. So it makes sense for our brains to see something. It's a lot easier on the eyes when it's symmetrical and balance has got a lot to do with it as well. So now that I've got this logo, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a color that I like for the fill. I've got no stroke at the minute. I'm gonna choose this light green color for now, but we can change the colors as we go. So what I wanna do with this logo is create the leaf so it's going around. So kind of like other logos that you may have seen, but I wanna make it unique. So the only way of doing this is by the color combinations that we're going to be using. Now the trick to this logo that I'm gonna show you is gonna blow your mind is a blending option. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this shape. I'm gonna press R for rotate, and I'm gonna hold option and down here, you should see if you've got smart guides turned on, you should see this little green thing that says anchor. I'm gonna click and hold the option whilst clicking and press preview and you'll get this little dialog box come up here. And what this does is this allows you to rotate by a certain number of degrees. So I'm gonna do 30 for now. This is all trial and error. Then I'm gonna go ahead and press shift or hold shift and scale this down just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna press R. I'm gonna click on the point of where I want it to rotate. And I'm going to keep doing this until I'm happy with the sort of place where it's at. There is actually a way of doing this quicker, but it takes a lot of technical know-how of the transform move tools in Illustrator. So the best way of doing it is handling it correctly and making sure it looks balanced. Okay, but that looks great, but there's no real information in the middle. If I carried on doing this, it would just look like a weird sort of generic logo. So the way you do this is by highlighting the shapes, going up to opacity here, Go to normal, which is the blend mode section, and then we're gonna change it from normal to multiply. And as you can see here, that because this one is oversecting there, you can see what happens to the color, it darkens. So we're gonna repeat this again, and the way that we're gonna repeat it is basically by doing the same thing. So what is it, what did we have on before? I think it was 30 or minus 30 or something. Uh, we're going to copy that, and we're going to make sure we make it smaller, like so. 
I mean, this isn't even set in stone. It kind of looks like a pot plant, but that's okay too. <laughs> I'm always clicking this anchor point in the center to scale everything down. What I'm doing with my keyboard when you're seeing this is I'm pressing R and S. R gives me the rotation tool up and I can rotate an object on a certain axis depending on where I click with this tool, which is very clever. And when I scale or press S for scale, if I click on a certain object like here, it will scale it from that position. So it's very handy for keeping things very symmetrical. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a little look and see what these look like. So I'm gonna do this by reflecting these two parts here and I'm pressing option and clicking on the guideline here. I've got preview turned on and I've got the vertical selection or the vertical reflection and I'm going to press OK. OK that doesn't actually look too bad but I think we can add a few more bits into here so what I'm going to do is literally just take this scale that up there or rotate that up rotate this up and we're going to do the same thing we're going to do this option rotate to minus 30 again then we're going to go ahead and scale it down with the scale tool, hopefully, if it works. But then I'm going to go ahead and rotate it so it's on a, hopefully, a level plane. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and scale this down a tiny bit, ever so slightly, if I can get it right. I'll just do it like this. Okay, so we've got this side done now. I wanna make sure that this one is level. I feel like I could nitpick at this all day. I just wanna get it level. So the next thing I'm gonna do is change the colors because I think that the colors need to be sort of gradiented a little bit to change this blend mode because this looks okay, but the greens are kind of weird and I want to create different lightnesses and stuff. So I've got a new color here that I want to put on this and I like this one better. And the reason why it's darker is because we're going to be moving up in the block gradient. So the, what I mean by this is we've got to do a couple more opacity effects. Now opacity has a lot to do with modern day logos. I want this to look like it's a touch screen or really clean touch screen. So the way we do this is by hot, like dragging onto all of these we're going to go to opacity and put it to 80%. And this is gonna give us a lighter version of it very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and change these colors to the one that I've put down. And then I'm going to also just bring it up ever so slightly every time. This is gonna help us get a really streamlined look at the logo and seeing what it is. I'm just changing the colors here again, making sure that they look okay. I'm just changing them ever so slightly on this sort of place here. So the brightness really is what I'm changing um, just to give them a difference in, in look. So there we've got like a bunch of different colors in there and they're just different forms of green and it makes it slightly more interesting in the center of the logo. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is highlight these three objects here or three shapes and then hold Alt, press O and then whilst holding Alt or Option, we go to the point here and we reflect it and press copy. Don't just press OK, otherwise you'll just copy the, well, not even copy it. But there you go. We have the logo there. And this is the icon. The only problem we have now is that no matter what we put on top of it, it's going to look really weird. So what we could do is save this and use the colors that we've got here and you know intersect it and make sure the colors are all there so it's a live shape and it's not got any blend modes on it. I'm not gonna do that because it's very straightforward doing that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add the type to this. So I've got a font that I really like and it's called Gotham Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and pre type in text flower or tech flower, okay? And then what we do is we're gonna scale this up to a nice point here and I'm gonna go to Gotham bold not black but gotham bold and i'm going to take all of this making sure that this shape is grouped make sure it's all aligned to the center there we go we've got tech flower there now i'm going to go ahead and choose a color for this so that's a bit too light and i want to create some contrast here so i'm going to bring the contrast down a tiny bit for the actual logo. That looks really good, I like that. And also something else that I wanna put on here is London because it's, I'm not in London, but I'm in the UK and I just wanna have London in the logo. And I think they want to have London in it as well in this sort of weird brief that I've got going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this down and then I'm just gonna type in London in full caps. I'm going to select it, align it to the center of the artboard like so. This looks kind of weird, there's no contrast. It kind of looks like just a wall of information. So the way you get that to sort itself is in the golden ratio or the Fibonacci effect. And I always do this and this is a secret tip that you guys are getting here. So the way that I change this to look even more contrasted is by going to the transform panel 
up here. So I'm gonna make sure that this is constrained so the actual link is there. So if you change one value, they all change. And I'm gonna to go to the width value or any value and press divide, which is forward slash by 1.618. And it's going to make it smaller in a divine proportion to this text. Now that is the importance of this. This is in divine proportion of this text in font size. Now, the other thing I want to do is increase the tracking. And there's a few ways of doing this. We can increase the tracking by, here we go, we could change it like so. That's too slow. I'm gonna hold Alt and use the arrow bars here. And then I'm going to recenter it like so. Move this up, see what it looks like. Now we're going to go ahead and play around with the scale of the logo see where we fall with it. Okay, so now we've got that logo in there. That is the main process. This could be an idea. Obviously, I haven't shown you the sketching stages or anything like that yet. So if you wanted to present this to a client and give a multiple different color scheme options, depending on the company, or if you have a branding system that means that you've got loads of different colors, then what you could do is create a new artboard and we're gonna change the colors instantly whilst keeping in the same sort of brightness and saturation, and this is super easy. So what I'm gonna do is highlight this, press Command G to copy it or to group it even. We're going to hold Alt or Option and just drag this whilst holding Shift into the center of this place here and we've got ourselves a new artboard with the work on. I'm gonna highlight this work and we're gonna go up to this little button up here and this is called the Recolor Artwork button. The cool thing about this button is that we can edit the colors inside of here and basically keep them all together. And again, we need to press this little link harmony here which will link all the colors in this wheel together so they move as one. Now what I'm gonna do is just press with the hue slider and we're gonna go find another color that we may like. So I kinda like the cyan or the teal colors here because that's really sort of modern, bright, but also looks really good and it fits with the company. Now, if you had a few different other ones, you may just wanna go ahead and just do this a few times and we can do, and it doesn't take any time whatsoever because you're keeping within the same wheel of color. So what we could do is go for maybe a pink, if we wanted to, or a purple, or we can go down here to a different color, like a different green, like a blue green. That looks very similar, but it's slightly different in color. And basically there you've got all these different logos in different colors. Now the only thing I would change about these is in fact, just moving the London up slightly. And there you go, you've got your actual Tech Flower London logo there. Now this was just a little design video to show you how easy and quickly it is that it takes to design a logo. But if you haven't noticed, I haven't really thought much about this. This is not a branding project. Logo design isn't this easy. The easiest part of the logo is vectorizing it and putting the things together like this. Now, what is hard is the thought process. Now, I've got a process down to the T in my thought processes for logo design, but for you, you may not. So having this sort of workflow test actually helps you come up with new ideas. And I created this on the fly. I had a brief in my head and I do this exercise quite a lot and I'm gonna be doing more videos of this exercise. But basically I just take an idea in my brain of a company and I spend literally 10 minutes doing it. And it, this is what you get, this nice looking logo here. Are there things that need to be changed in it? Of course they do. The, is it a finalized logo? It could be but I don't think it's one that I would give to a client straight away. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video and a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a UX design course intended to get you a job in the industry. For more information about Dev Mountain and what they do, please press that link down below in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it and enjoyed the content and would like to see more, press that red subscribe button down below, share this video, let me know what you think of this video, and obviously I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon, goodbye.